Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about Hirschsprung's disease, also called congenital megacolon. Megacolon means that the colon is dilated and it is a congenital disorder. This is a disorder of the distal part of the large intestine, characterized by absence of ganglion cells usually the distal part but the other part of the large intestine may also be affected there is absence of myenteric plexus also called the overbox plexus that is present between the longitudinal muscle layer and the circular muscle layer of the intestine and Meissner's plexus that is the plexus present in the submucous of the wall of the large intestine okay these are present throughout the entire intestine but in case of Hirschsprung disease the myenteric plexus and the Meissner's plexus in the large intestine will be absent okay so this myenteric plexus and the Meissner's plexus are associated with parasympathetic function they form parasympathetic ganglion in the wall of the intestine. Okay, they only get contribution from very minimum number of sympathetic fibers. These are mostly parasympathetic and they are associated with peristalsis of the intestine. The disease affects one in 5,000 newborn and is four times more common among the boys. And the disease is manifested within a within 24 to 48 hours after birth, maybe within a few weeks after birth. Congenital megacolon is a multigenic disorder with incomplete penetrance and variable expression. The RET proto oncogen oncogen gene is the major susceptibility gene. Hirschsprung's disease is more common among the Down syndrome patient, Down syndrome that is the trisomy 21 condition. Okay, we got that. Now we'll go to the next slide. Okay, here Hirschsprung disease or congenital megacolon pathogenesis the nor the large intestine containing normal ganglion cell that means containing the normal myenteric plexus and and the and the Meissner plexus okay that those plexus contain these ganglion ganglion cells okay so containing normal ganglion cells is dilated proximal to the a ganglionic part. The dilation results from failure of the aganglionic part to relax. The feces or the or the product of digestion cannot get exit through the anus. In most cases, the rectum and sigmoid colon is the site site of lacking ganglion cell. The entire large intestine may also be affected. So is the site of lacking ganglion cells. The ganglion cells are derived from the neural crash cells during fifth to seventh week of intrauterine life. For any reason, there is no migration of the neural crash cell in the wall of the intestine, specifically large intestine, then there will be development of Hirschsprung's disease or congenital megacolon. Okay, here we are looking at the congenital megacolon here. This is the congenital megacolon, the A ganglionic part. Okay, there may be partial obstruction, maybe complete obstruction. There will be chronic constipation, tonic contraction in indicate peristalsis. There may be enterocolitis, that is a devastating condition. Okay, what happened? Why it is dilated? Dilated with feces and gaseous ganglion cells that is the myenteric plexus and the Meissner's plexus are, abs are 
are absent here in the ganglionic part. It is present here. Present here, it is attempting to pass the content through this area, a ganglionic part, but this does not relax. This part contains the Meissner's myenteric plexus. This part does not contain the, the myenteric and the Meissner's plexus. Here, there is a barium enema in a one month old infant, congenital megacolon, okay, a ganglionic distal segment, rectum and distal sigmoid colon, okay, here, colon is narrow with distended normal ganglionic bowel. This bowel contains the myenteric plexus and the masonary plexus, they does not, okay full of fecal material here, the feces, proximal to it, note the transition zone, this is the transition zone, okay, of normal and abnormal area, this is the rectum, this is the anal canal, okay, so they, the, this part, this part doesn't contain the Meissner's plexus or the myenteric plexus. So, will go to treatment, surgeon get cut this part and pull the colon to the anus. Pathogenesis, we are looking at the pathogenesis again. Hirschsprung disease occurred due to non-migration of neural crest cell or the premature death of ganglion cell for any region. A newborn cannot pass meconium, enterocolitis may develop. Sign symptoms, nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, and constipation, and certainly failure to thrive. How can I diagnose Hirschsprung disease? Biopsy by a suction device so that we can get the entire or maximum part of the wall of the colon or rectum. So, biopsy by a suction device. Otherwise, you may miss the, bio, the pathological tissue. Abdominal x-ray using a contrast dye like barium, anal manometry to look at the how tight the egg ganglionic part is. Okay, treatment, laparoscopic ultra surgery or ostomy surgery depending on the surgeon's expertise and the patient's condition. But there should be follow up regularly after surgery because there is chance of anal incontinence and uh, there will be some placement of the patient with Hirschsprung disease. They should, the child should attend the school with a bathroom facility close to the, the, the classroom. Okay, so follow up is important because there is chance of anal incontinence. Okay, and that's all about the Hirschsprung disease. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. And please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.